but it's not simple. One paramecium is more complex than the space shuttle. And you can put thousands of those into a drop of water. Smaller is not simpler. Here's a paperclip around a microchip. This ant is holding a microchip in his mouth. That microchip can process every letter of the Bible 200 times per second. Smaller is more complex. I'll show you. Let's compare the brain of a honeybee to the NASA Cray computer, the YMPC-90, at one time the world's fastest computer. The Cray computer is huge. The brain of the honeybee is tiny. The Cray computer did six billion calculations per second. They estimate the honeybee's brain does a thousand billion per second. The Cray computer uses many megawatts. The honeybee uses 10 microwatts, extremely efficient. The honeybee can fly a million miles on one gallon of honey. Let me see you make a machine that gets a million miles per gallon. The cray cost $48 million. The honeybee's brain is pretty cheap. You spot them on your windshield all the time. <laughs> Many people scramble when the cray breaks down. The honeybee heals itself. The cray weighed 2,300 pounds. The honeybee's brain doesn't weigh too much. Let's see, what can we conclude? The supercomputer was huge, slow, inefficient. You had to babysit the dumb thing. But everybody knows it had to be designed. Right? There's nobody with half a brain that'll tell you the cray came from an explosion in an electronics factory. <laughs> it was designed, okay? And yet they turn right around and think the honeybee evolved. And the brain of a human is a lot more complex than a honeybee. A lot more complex. But you know, your brain is capable of a memory capacity of storing all the information of the British Library. And it has a computational speed in bits per second equivalent to the entire national telephone system. Just in three pounds of gray matter. It's estimated there are more connections in your brain than there are electrical connections in the world. How many times have two wires been put together and crimped or soldered or clamped together somehow? Wire nutted in the world? Your brain probably has more than that in the number of connections. Just one brain. I asked a professor one time, I said, Sir, do you believe your brain is nothing but three pounds of chemicals that got together by chance over billions of years? He said, Yes, I do. I said, Then how can you trust your thoughts and the reasoning processes? Maybe you got a chemical in there backwards. He did, by the way. Anybody that believes they come from a rock has several of them in there backwards, in my opinion. Then they tell them, well, DNA proves evolution. Every, just about every debate I do, they'll say, DNA proves evolution. Oh, let's talk about this. This textbook says we have evidence from molecular biology, talking about the DNA, the oxyribonucleic acid. This book says Darwin speculate, speculated that all forms of life are related. This speculation has been verified because of DNA sequences. This is a lie. There's nothing about DNA that has helped verify evolution. The DNA is the most complicated molecule in the universe. One DNA strand is about six or seven feet long. Average person in this room has 50 trillion cells in their body. Each of those contains 46 DNA strands, except for the gametes, they've got 23. If you took all the DNA out of your body, it would fill about two tablespoons. But if you unwound it and stretched it out, this really complex, tight molecule would stretch out, and you could tie them all together, and one person's DNA would stretch from Earth to the moon and back five million round trips out of two tablespoons. It's got the most complicated code ever in the history of the world. If you typed out the code found in your DNA, when you got done typing, you'd have enough books to fill Grand Canyon 40 times. Does anybody work with computers at all? Let me see you get 40 Grand Canyons full of books, condense it to software. CD-ROM, PK-ZIP, I don't care what you use, PsyQuest. When you're all done, though, it has to fit into two tablespoons. My Heavenly Father did it. He's pretty smart, ain't he? David said, I will praise thee, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't even have a microscope, and he could figure it out. 
You know, from conception to birth, the baby adds 15,000 cells per minute to its body, each one more complex than a space shuttle. How would you like to be in charge of supplying materials for a factory that's producing 15,000 space shuttles a minute? Some of you ladies are thinking, I did, man, that's hard. <laughs> Sometimes in the middle of the night, they want pickles down there for something. What do you want a pickle for? I don't know, but go get one. <laughs> Must be building something that needs part of a pickle. Who knows, you know? You know, the probability of one DNA arranging itself by chance has been calculated to be 1 in 10 to the 119,000th power. That's a big number when you consider the entire visible universe is 10 to the 28 inches in diameter. Big number. DNA does not prove evolution. DNA only shows how complex life is. You know, penicillin only has two chromosomes. Fruit flies have eight. I put together some critters and said, you know, I think I know how evolution really happened. Penicillin was first and it evolved to a fruit fly. And then it evolved to a tomato or a house fly. They're twins, you know, they both have 12 chromosomes. Very hard to tell the difference between those two. And then slowly over millions of years, they got some more chromosomes and became a pea. And then it evolved to a bee. 